exciting day ahead of us so let's get it oh is she approaching <laughs>
family, we are here today to bask in a feeling of joy, gratitude, and delight. We're gathered to honor a true miracle, the kind that happens when love is strong between two individuals, and it leads them to weave their lives together, choosing to walk the journey of life as partners, as one in spirit. This incredible ability to love is no ordinary thing. It is a divine gift from God, and this wedding is a grand celebration of this miraculous gift. Today, we're not just witnessing, but active participants in this union of Candace and Ronaldo. We are here to surround them with our love, support, and goodwill as they embark on this thrilling adventure called marriage. After all, there's nothing more powerful or boundless than love. Love, born of God, is not just a part of life, it's the reason we exist. We'd like to take a moment to remember those who could not be here, especially Mr. Martin. They are here with us in spirit, they love us, and they remember us in their prayers. It has been a great honor to spend time with Candace and Ronaldo, getting to know them. In the time we've spent working on this wedding, it's been a privilege to witness the depth of their connection seeing firsthand the tender moments and genuine understanding that defines their love. Their love has evolved, becoming a beacon of resilience and steadfast commitment, illuminating the path that they have chosen to walk together through laughter, conversations, shared dreams, and the countless everyday moments that make up a life. I've seen them weave a rich tapestry of companionship and deep respect. Seeing two lives merge, while still retaining their unique sparks is a beautiful sight indeed. So let's rejoice in this moment, celebrate the power of love, and stand together as they begin their journey, not as two, but as one. And it always strikes me as funny when the Lord sees fit to match two people who seem to live completely different opposite lives. One is practical. <laughs> one wears their heart on their sleeve. One loves to plan and stick to that plan. <laughs> the other loves to see where life takes them. <laughs> but these two different souls are blessed in their differences and the balance that they are creating in this marriage. Even less than perfect first dates could not keep them apart. At this moment, we would like to take a prayer. Lord, we thank you for gathering everyone here today. We ask that you help Candace and Ronaldo remember the strong love that they share. Help them to work that love into practical things that nothing can divide them. May their love always inspire them to be kind in their words, considerate of the other's feelings, and concerned for the other's needs and wishes. Increase their faith and trust in you. Bless their marriage with peace and happiness, and make their love fruitful for your glory and their joy, both here and in eternity. Amen. Amen. I would like to call up Renee for the first reading, please. So the first reading is from Romans 12, verses 9 through 18. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Thank you. There end the reading. Jasmine. All right, uh, today I'll be reading An Uncommon Love uh, by Tara Cox. May you have the love only two can know. May you go where only two as one may go. May the sun rise and set in your bonded hearts and the moon never find you too long apart. May you cherish each other's dreams as your own and turn stumbling blocks into, stum into stepping stones. May you brave life's mountains and miles together. May there be no storm your love cannot weather. May you always be lovers and allies and friends. May your soul's conversations never end. May you capture on earth what's in heaven above. 
May your hearts know the rapture of an uncommon love. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, to make this legal, <laughs> Ronaldo, do you yes. take Candace to be your wife and life partner? In the name of God's grace and love, do you vow to work on a family budget from this day forward? I do. <laughs> yeah. And do you, Candace, take Ronaldo to be your husband and life partner, promising before God and these folks to love him, even when he wants you to read three books in one sitting? I do. Beautiful. All right, the couple will now read their personal vows. So, Milady, you will go first. You came into my life when I was least expecting you. I thank God for sending you my way. Now, I have to admit, I wasn't quite sure what to expect when you arrived 30 minutes late to our first date <laughs> and with a smoking car. <laughs> but I'm glad I stayed. Otherwise, I would have never had the chance to fully understand all of the wonderful qualities that you possess, and I wouldn't be standing here today. When I look at you today, I see a man who has a heart of gold, a man that would literally give the shirt off his back to a complete stranger, a man that has an unmatched passion for life, especially working out, <laughs> hours and hours of working out. <laughs> A man that truly believes in the genuine good in everything and everybody, and can somehow manage to see a rainbow through any cloud or storm that comes his way. But most importantly, I see a man who is my biggest supporter, even if it means running the last 5K of a marathon with me. Mm -hmm. A man that loves all that I am, the good and the bad, and a man that would give his life just to make sure that I'm happy, protected, and safe. So thank you for loving me. Thank you for simply being you. I'm excited to begin this next chapter of our lives together. I know that every day will not be easy, but I choose us today. I'll choose us again tomorrow, and I'll go on choosing us day after day for the rest of our lives even if each day is not so easy to make that choice. As we stand here in front of our friends and family, here are my promises to you. I promise to encourage your kindness and optimism because they are what make you unique. I promise to nurture your dreams and support your goals. I promise to help shoulder our challenges because there is nothing we cannot face if we stand together. I promise to not keep score, mainly because remember, I'm always right. <laughs> so you did. <laughs> I promise to make sure you get more stamps in your passport. <laughs> I promise to continue to nag you to wash the dishes and pick up after yourself. <laughs> I promise to laugh with you in good times and struggle alongside you in bad times. I promise that I'm always in this with you, no matter what life throws at us. I'm with you also. Lastly, I promise to love you now and always. I love you. I love you too. Hey, 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 hey! Stop that! You're gonna get me in trouble. Uh, gross, gross, gross. The spirit took control. I, I, I have nothing to do with this. That's, that's on y'all. Can help it. Can help it. So, uh, excuse me, baby. Sorry, I uh, do it the old school way, pencil and paper. So I'm gonna just read this exactly how I wrote it. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, all right. So, thank you, baby. So I've never written vows before. This is my first time. Okay, good to know, good to know. <laughs> but I wrote this the best way I know how, and that is by telling a story. So, inhale and exhale with me. Inhale and exhale, take it in. I want you to imagine just me and you standing on a beach and no one else, just me and you, holding each other's hands and listening to the waves 
of the beach go back and forth. Can you hear it? I'm happy that we're here, me and you, on this beach, because here is where my mind is at peace and I can fully express myself to you. I want you to imagine a boat floating on the shoreline of this beach. And printed on this boat, it says, the voyage of our marriage. I take you into this boat, and we push off the shoreline, holding hands as bold lovers as we look towards the boundless ocean, the ocean that represents the infinite possibilities of what we will experience in our marriage together. As we sail forward in our marriage, like the ocean, sometimes the days will be calm, tranquil, skies will be blue, the sun will shine bright, beautiful birds will fly through the sky and everything will be perfect. Other times, like the ocean, as we sail in our marriage, we will look out into the distance and see storm clouds approaching and inevitably sail into those storms. The skies will be dark, the waves will be rough, and rain will fall on our happiness. I stand here before you, not because of the blue skies. I stand here because I look forward to covering you and supporting you through the rough, unrelenting storms. Through the ups and downs that we will go through in our marriage and the sorrows and joys of life. Now, if anyone knows Candace, she's a very straightforward woman and a straight shooter. And she just doesn't want to hear attractive words. She wants to know specifics of how I will contribute to keeping this boat afloat. <laughs> so, based on the many conversations we've had over the three years, there are some things that I want to make clear that I heard and I want to contribute. The first is I vow to save long term, and in other words, spend less and spend wisely. A family savings, I think, is what Fallon said. <laughs> to keep this boat afloat, to keep this boat properly cared for, maintaining the engines, and keeping the sail wide, sail wide, so that we can catch all the blessings that God blows our way. Second, I strive to be a better communicator, especially during our disagreements. I vow to be a better listener and not cut you off when you're speaking before you finished your point. One of your very, very serious pet peeves. <laughs> as we sail forward, Candace, I will listen closer as we're on this boat, clearly hear you, try my best to understand you, and only after those three will I respond. That's my promise. And third, I vow to avoid overreacting in certain situations when I should be very calm. You know better than anyone, since we live together, that sometimes I, I can make a scene, I can talk loudly, and I should be calmer as your partner. I'm not perfect, so this is a first step in me trying to be a better man for our marriage right now, and to avoid our boat capsizing, or avoid you jumping overboard. <laughs> There is a saying that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a, with a single step. But since we're in this boat together, let it be the voyage of a thousand miles begin with a single row. I look forward to rowing with you for the rest of our lives. I love you, and I can't wait to demonstrate these vows to you in our marriage. I love you. No, 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 but... Again! All right, you in this notebook. I'm gonna tuck it in here. All right, rings. You ready?
Go for my own. Perfect. Okay, All right, it. Candace, you are going to put this on his left finger and you are going to repeat after me. As we walk through life together, as we walk through life together, let this ring remind you, let this ring remind you that we are an unbreakable team, that we are an unbreakable team. I give you this ring, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow, as a symbol of my vow to love and cherish you, to love and cherish you. <laughs> Sir? Perfect. Repeat after me. As we walk through life together. As we walk through life together. Let this ring remind you. Let this ring remind you. That we are an unbreakable team. That we are an unbreakable team. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. To love and cherish you. To love and cherish you. Check and check. All right, you may come and do the unity candle. I'll move out of the way. As you take your individual tapers and light the larger candle, it shows that you will grow together and be blessed by the Holy Spirit to bring your light to the world and to each other. So please. Wonderful. Let's hope this flame keeps shining bright, lighting your way through love and faith. Making a relationship work is going to take dedication, and it's not all work. Keep dating each other, keep the romance alive, and show each other that your love and marriage will get better with time. Nurture your trust, honor your dedication, and keep an open heart and mind. You're on this beautiful journey together, ready to weather whatever life brings your way. I have a little bit of parting uh, advice before we're done. Remember, do not laugh at your partner's choices. Remember, they chose you. <laughs> by the power vested in me and by the power of your love and commitment to each other, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may now kiss. <laughs> the couple has chosen as their first act as a married couple to jump the room. This jump isn't just for fun. It is a beautiful tradition symbolizing the start of the journey of building a home together. It's a wedding tradition rich with cultural significance. Originally believed to originate from Ghana, this custom served as a dignified form of marital rights during the era of slavery when legal weddings were prohibited. Symbolizing a new beginning and the joining of two families, this tr tradition has endured, offering a powerful nod to ancestry and perseverance. The broom represents the sweeping away of all the old stuff, old worries, old habits, old takeout containers. We're talking about making room for the fresh, exciting, and new adventures that await them in their marriage. So I would love for all of you to help. When we're everyone ready, we're going to say one, two, three, and you're all gonna say jump with me. One, two, three, jump!
trip to heaven, yeah, a fantasy come true, there is no greater wonder, a spell you got me under, whatever you ask of me, I'll do, so wherever you from, that's where Guys, when I get ready to announce Mr. and Mrs. Williams, I need you to wave it as if though your passports got expeditiously approved, all right? So I'm gonna do a dry test run. I'm gonna do a dry test run. Ladies and gentlemen, for the second time tonight, I wanna introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Williams! I love this energy. Listen, my name is Royal. I'm your MC slash dance instructor slash hype man. That is my iHeart Radio brother executive. Lee, my sound tech, I see my brother. But it's only right that we introduce the people that help make this whole thing come together. So right now, behind those doors right there, or that open curtains right now, are my hype men. I need you guys to please make some noise right now for my guys. My close men. I name Gavin Jamal. Josiah, Ken, Ante, Rahan, and my best man, Sean! Keep that energy up right there! Keep it up! For my crews, man, y'all. I like that. That was nice. That was nice. But guess what? The bridesmaid said that was cute. That was cute. That was cute. But guess what? You know the concert didn't come here just yet. But you know what? I got my bridesmaids. They're ready. My bridesmaids are ready. Can you please make some noise right now for my stars right now? Brianna, Dania, Candy, Gloria, Christina, Anya, Colette. And big Trisha and big Christian as a maid of honor. That's a little one. Oh. Anything you do will be held against you. You have to move, 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 move. Stop off, make room. Still be coming through. Big boss on the move, yeah. Bounce. Yeah. Everybody around me. Yeah. Bounce. Gentlemen, please make some noise right now for my bridesmaids. So right now, it's about that time. So remember rule number three. I need you guys to grab those napkins right now. 
Everybody stand up in front of your seats right now. Everybody stand up, stand up, stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Stand, hold up. We're going to give him a running intro. Ladies and gentlemen, for a moment you've been waiting for, Mr. and Mrs. Williams. Tell me, can you please make some noise right now for Mr. and Mrs. Williams?
Can you please give him a big round of applause right now? But you know they don't do anything regular. You know they don't do anything regular. Oh! If you love them, I need everybody to put one hand up, put one hand up and point to them right now. Point to them right now. Got somebody. Sing for me. She is a beauty. Very special. On the count of three. Everybody clap your hands. On the count of three. One, two, one, two, three, go. Just yet. You're about to the sound of the sound of the Ladies and gentlemen, can you please make some noise right now for the couple of the decade, Mr. and Mrs. Williams! You know what, I love that. You love your mommy, I love that. But you know what, can we do something else? Can we do that real quick? Can we do that? Listen to some sweet drop, I don't, 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 don
Pull up the fights that you play. Can you play some more? Can, can you play, play some more? Don't you feel for Lift it up, jack it up, pull it up, come again in that. Can you play some more? Can you play some more? Ladies and gentlemen, can you please make some noise right now for Ray and Mama Ray? I love that. understand why God called you home so soon and without allowing me a chance to at least say goodbye. I think about you often. Some days are harder than others, like your birthday that just passed. 
and today when I walk down the aisle. I still haven't even been able to bring myself 15 years later to delete your number from my contacts. But I will forever cherish and be thankful for the time I did have with you and the memories we shared. There are so many things you missed over the years. Some so wonderful that you wouldn't believe. The Eagles finally won a Super Bowl. We even made it back for a second one last year. Obama did win and we had our first black president. There are now even ride sharing apps that would have completely solved your complaint of having to always drive us everywhere. There were so many things that I wish you were there by my side for over the years. I did graduate from law school two months after you passed away. You'll be happy to know. I passed the bar and I started that job at the law firm that you didn't understand that day why they would pay so much money to someone who knew so little. I bought my first house before I turned 30, just like I promised you. And I've been traveling the world, seeing all the places we used to visit on the It's a Small World ride in Disney World. You'll be surprised to know I even moved to California. But most importantly, I met someone who you would have loved just as much as I do. Now, there are a few caveats. He doesn't have your hair. Well, let's be honest, he doesn't have any hair at all. He isn't a member of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. And he sucks at Jeopardy. I mean, really, really bad dad. But he loves Michael Jackson. He eats everything in sight, just like you. And most important, he loves me more than I thought was possible. So you can rest now, knowing I'm in good hands. Thank you for everything. I will always keep you close to my heart, honor your name, and be comforted by the wonderful memories that we did share. Love, your daughter, Candace Martin Williams. For everyone in the room, if you could do me one last favor and take a moment to help me celebrate my dad and his memory. Some of you had the pleasure of knowing him. Some of you for more years, even than I did. Some of you never got to meet him, but hopefully this video gave you a glimpse of who he was. If everyone could please raise your glasses and toast to one of the original girl dads, to the man that loved Disney World more than Mickey Mouse. To the man who taught me that I only need to remember to do two things in life, stay black and pay taxes. To the man who taught me through education and hard work, all things are possible. To the first man to show me what unconditional love is. Cheers to my dad, Clarence Martin Jr. And to my other close loved ones, we're celebrating with us from heaven tonight. Welcome to a wonderful evening. As um, Ronaldo's older sister, I'm very honored that my brother asked me to pray tonight. So before we start, I just want to take a moment to let heaven hear us. So give God a good praise, a good praise right now. Lift him up because he got us this far. Bigger than that, I want heaven to hear us. Praise him, praise him, hallelujah, praise him. All right. So my brother called me and asked me to write a prayer for him and Candace. So I'm going to ask everyone to join me as I say this prayer. Stretch your hands forward. It won't be long. Toward the happy couple. And let's bow our eyes and close. Let's bow her, our heads and close our eyes. If you could just stretch your hands towards them. Dear Lord, we come before you today lifting you up because you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. 
You order our steps and direct our paths. You led Ronaldo and Candace to meet each other at the perfect time and in the right season of their lives. As this beautiful couple moves forward as husband and wife, may they be fruitful, bearing the fruits of the spirit, patience, peace, kindness, forgiveness, self-control, goodness, gentleness, and joy. We know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So may Candace and Ronaldo grow in your word and let the mind of Christ be in them, so that in the day of testing, they may stand on the truth of your word and know who they are in Christ. May they humbly seek you, knowing that you often take us through trials rather than out of trials. May they grow strong individually and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit so that they may be unbreakable together. Candace and Ronaldo, may God cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Bless this evening, Father, and bless everyone here. In Jesus' name I pray, and we pray, and we say, Amen. Amen. Good evening, good evening, good evening to you all. Um, my wife precedes me. She's going to speak before I do. I yield to my wife. <laughs> First, I want to thank everyone for coming here to celebrate with us. Uh, we, my son's very special to me, and I'm very happy that he met someone like Candice to share his life with. We love you. I take great pleasure in welcoming you to my family. And just help me drink a toast to Ronaldo and Candice. Cheers. I'm uh, mm. yeah. Listen. All right. Thank you, my loving wife, Verna. Mr. Master of Ceremonies, to our son, Candice, and daughter-in-law. I mean, to our son, Ronaldo, and daughter-in-law, Candice. I think I had one too many. So forgive me. I'd like to say tonight is a special night for both of you. And your mom, Ronaldo, and I, we're very proud of you. Candice, my wife was very impressed when she first met you. She looked at me and said, you even pressed his shirt when he was going out. <laughs> and for that, that was it for her. So many women would not press a man's shirt or iron a man's shirt. They say, go with a crumbled shirt. <laughs> but you do care about him and that matters. And to your family, your mom, mom, I can tell you this, my wife and myself met you and immediately our spirit took a hold of you. We love you and we welcome you all into the family on your side. Ronaldo, we have spoken many times and I'll be quite frank, I have been tough on Ronaldo when it comes to his other sibling, Rene and Andrea. Because when he was growing up, if there was a problem with a toy or so, and Andrea is the one who would like to bug him, she'll take his toy and he'll come, Dad, you know, Andrea took my toy. And I said, Renaldo, it's your sister. Give her the toy. He's like, but Dad, you're on fear. I said, yes, I am on fear. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, Renaldo, the little things have made you into a man. Someone who cares about people, you have your wife now, which is the number one person is going to be in your life. Protector, lover, that's what we expect of you. As a matter of fact, I'm, I've done this in years, and I'm going to do a little special toast for Ronaldo and Candice. I think I'm going to need your help here tonight in order to make this toast and make it very special for them. And uh, I'm certain I want to entire audience of the last word. I'm going to give the best speech tonight. I just want to um, do a little practice. When I raise my hand like this, I just want you to shout best. All right? So let's do a little practice. Best. And if I do two, best, best. if I do three, best, best, best. if I hold my hand like that, best. ah. All right, here we go. 
Tonight, Ronaldo, Candice, you are indeed the best. And we are all second. Best. Of course, you didn't know that you'd play second best tonight. Yeah. I'd like to say, Candice, I hope you will make the best. cake, pudding, and meal for Ronaldo. He is one of the Best. Caribbean men, and he likes oxtails. He likes fried chicken. So do your best to make him happy in the Best. way. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for participating in the Best. speech. Please do not plagiarize this speech because my daughter-in-law is in the legal profession and you will be sued in the way to give me millions of dollars so tonight ladies and gentlemen i ask of you to give raise your glass to toast candice and ronaldo in the way and candice ronaldo you are indeed the So right now I have Mrs. Cara Martin with a special message of love for my amazing newlyweds. Hello everyone, I'm Carol, the happy mother of the bride. I would like to thank all of you for coming and sharing in this occasion. Candace is a delightful daughter, smart, kind, but tough enough to hold her own. Ronaldo, you are gaining an independent and motivated wife, my baby girl. I knew that she was an independent soul from when she was a little girl. Whenever I used to try and help her do something, like tie her shoe, she would refuse help and say, I have no. She has always been motivated from the time she was a little girl. I remember when she entered a Black History Oratorical Contest. I couldn't believe that was my little girl. I knew at that moment she was going to be someone great, whatever she chose to do. I know her father is watching from heaven and sending his love. Rinalda you are just the perfect match for Candace. Warm, inviting, and protective of those you love. If I had a son, I would want him to be just like Ronaldo. They make the perfect couple, great hearts, strong love, and successful in their own right. Candace and Ronaldo, here is two years of happiness. May your love grow stronger each day. Hello. Oh, oh. Okay, um, I'm Renee Williams. I'm Ronaldo's oldest sister. I found out I was speaking yesterday, so I have nothing prepared. And uh, that's my father. Um, not that funny. Anyway, um, I don't know if I should tell this story, but my earliest memory of Ronaldo is when he was a baby. I used to pinch you in the crib. <laughs> Just so that I could comfort you because it made me feel good. <laughs> So I'm like, and then you start crying. I'm like, oh, hush, hush. I just do it again. Um, anyway, it's interesting. Um, people talk about having a protective older brother. Um, I actually have a very protective younger brother. And Ronaldo was someone, if someone got in my face, he would just be there ready to fight. It's more like, what's wrong? Who do I need to fight? It's not even, Rennie, are you wrong? Are you right? It's who do I need to fight? That's how he is. And I was like, yeah, fight that guy. Beat him up with that one. Um, anyway, um, I just wanted to wish you the best. Ronaldo is a kind and giving person, and I think oh, you told me to move. I think one of the things I really cherish about our relationship as siblings is the fact that we can talk. Ronaldo and I speak about every and anything. I've heard all his trials, his tribulations, his successes, his failures, and to see you evolve into the man you are today has been truly a blessing. And it does my heart good. I'm so happy for you tonight. I know you're looking forward to being a husband and a father. I think you're going to be a wonderful husband and a wonderful father, even though he doesn't pick up after himself, as you said. It's a work in progress. Just make him some oxtail, he'll be all right. 
As for Candice, I think, you know, when I met you, you were exactly what he was looking for. I think he's looking for someone who complimented him very well. And I'm happy that God brought you into his life. I wish you both many years together. I wish you a fruitful marriage. I wish you a successful marriage. And I think 1 Corinthians always says, love is patient, love is kind, but love is also challenging. And I think um, I appreciated your vows because you spoke in a realness about the challenges that will come. But I think the important thing is that you face those challenges together. And as long as you are together in God, you can overcome anything. So raise your glasses. I don't have one, so raise one in my stead. Take a sip and say congratulations to the new Mr. and Mrs. Williams. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Andrea Williams as well. Um, Ronaldo's other sister, as well. No, uh, Ronaldo and um, I, we have a very interesting relationship. Growing up in Jamaica together, we were each other's first best friend. My sister moved on to high school and in elementary. Goodness, Ronaldo, put that down. <laughs> and in my young camera. We're a very, very plain family, as you can see. So as Renato and I were in elementary school walking home from school together, my job was to protect him. So I'm the protective sister. And just remembering those days that we were each other's first best friend and then we moved to the United States and we had to just be friends with each other until we made new friends. So some things we did, we used to um, tie each other up and tickle each other. That was, that's the best game ever. And as well, um, of course, you know, brother and, sibling, brother and sister, we were competitive with each other. Um, but the love that we share is amazing. And Candace, one thing I can tell you about my brother is that though I say I'm protective, he is a protector and he will protect you with his life. Um, I've seen him do that with me. And as my sister said, no one can say anything to me. Ronaldo is there front and center. You are guarded, you're protected, you're secure with him. And I just want to wish you both the best. Anything I could say in regards to marriage is um, know that marriage has its ups and downs, as you both know, but you will overcome it if you believe you can. Trust in God to get through it. And remember that you're responsible for your own happiness. Yes, your moods can affect each other, but at the end of the day, you're responsible for your own happiness. Grow together, walk together, take a day off, get back together. But it's a fun ride, so I wish you both the best. I love you, brother, and I love you, sis. And um, everyone, if you can, just raise your glasses. And I wish you the best. Toast to both of you. <laughs> Congratulations again. Cheers, cheers, cheers. cheers. Um, I want to call my son Liam up. He wanted to say something to his uncle. Happy marriage, and remember to learn about your aviation. Nephew. Anyway, on a serious note, Ronaldo, we're, um, much love and again, just so happy for you. Um, who else is talking after me? All right, so we will do our best after recovering Surprise from their photo montage. montage. <laughs> recovering from their photo montage of our father. Um, but seriously, so I guess I'm the, we're the only people speaking for Candace, and I guess I'm the only one with stories going all the way back to the crib. So let's see what I can go back into that memory and come up with. Um, but seriously, going back, um, Candace and I really were each other's best friends growing up. And, and we really spent a tremendous amount of time um, growing up together. We spent a tremendous amount of time together. So growing up, one of the stories that I can remember my mom always telling was one time Candace was crying. And Candace couldn't have been more than maybe about six months, maybe even a year old. And my mom asked me to go upstairs and just pat her on her back and make sure she was okay. And I was like, sure, I'll go take care of the baby. And I guess about halfway up the steps, my mom thought about it and was like, mm, this probably was not a good idea. <laughs> so my mom said, right as she got to the doorway, she saw me kind of rearing back to give Candace the pat of all times. <laughs> she was like, yeah, you probably were going to pat her right out of that crib. <laughs> but I was just going to make sure I was taking care of her like any big sister should. Um, but seriously, any, any other time, just um, trying to think of some other good stories. 
there was a time when Candace and I desperately wanted to pierce our ears. And our parents were like, no, you can't get your ears pierced. And we wanted our ears pierced so bad we were going to take matters in our own hands. So armed with a hole punch, somehow I had managed to convince Candace to go first. I'm not even sure what earrings we thought we were going to be able to ever put into our ears after we had put those monster-sized holes in our ears. But my mom opened the door just as I was trying to stuff Candace's earlobes into that hole punch. And let's just say, had it worked out, we probably both were going to be in desperate need of an emergency room but my mom managed to stop us just in enough time. Just in enough time. Um, fast forward a couple of years. We were getting off the school bus one day and we could kind of hear some police sirens in the distance. And just normal, Candace was getting off the school bus because she knows we get off the school bus, cross the street and go home. Police sirens were coming. They were chasing somebody in a stolen car. So I grabbed Candace by the collar and snatched her back onto the bus because all I can see is all these cars coming about to hit my sister. So Candace, I guess she was oblivious to all that was about to happen. All she does is just like any sister would, turns around and is ready to fight me right on the school bus because all she knows is I just horse collared her and she wasn't having it. So here we are about to fight. Just as the bus driver's like, no, but your sister was really about to save you. And she's like, no, my sister just grabbed you and I'm not having that. And we're about to fight. I think we may have actually started fighting on the school bus, actually. She actually always was just a little bit more headstrong than I was. Bus driver's trying to break it up, but it, it was all in good fun. Then Chrissy's probably got a good one, too. I do. <laughs> you look very beautiful tonight, Candace. Especially your hair. You know what memory I'm going for right now. I, not many of you know this, I was an excellent Barbie hairstylist. I, I did beautiful things. And I realized I should move on to people. And so I had my little blunt scissors that my parents gave me because I could, you know, you could cut Barbie hair with blunt scissors. And I was like, Candace looks so peaceful taking that nap over there. Let me just, I don't know, bangs, layers. I could do something before she wakes up. So I grabbed a chunk and I realized the scissors were way too blunt. So I went downstairs to the Christmas wrapping box and I got the sharp ones. And I went back up there, grabbed the same chunk She's, she's hard sleeper, I don't know if you still are. Um, and that's where the story ends, because I saw the whites in her eyes. She woke up, and if my mom hadn't come into the room, we were about to find out how many scissors cuts it takes to kill a person. <laughs> you would never have met Candace because, well, you know I met Candace, you never met me. We really were good friends growing up, so all of our stories really didn't revolve around violence. Really was a very peaceful household. You wouldn't know it by the first few stories. <laughs> um, I could think of one where we changed schools. I think I was about fifth grade, so Candace may have been third grade, where well, Candace was third grade. And Candace wanted to try out for the track team. But it came time to try out for the track team, and Candace was too scared to try out for the track team. And I was like, oh, well, just go ahead and try out. I'll try out with you. Well, I don't think I have to tell you which one of us was the most athletic and which one of us definitely had no business trying out for the track team. So whistle, whistle blew. Candace and everyone else was already well into their 50-yard dash, was it? Except for me. So it definitely did not help for me making friends in a new school. Candace made the track team, but it didn't help my case at all. But it did help with that sisterly bond. And speaking of that sisterly bond, the one thing that Candace and I love to do more than anything else 
was play Barbies. And I was reminded of that when I went to see the Barbie movie with my daughter. It brought back all of those memories of our favorite thing to do. I mean, I'm talking about we transformed the entire basement of our parents' house into our own Barbie land. We had multiple dream houses, townhouses, campers, hundreds of Barbies. We had to have two of all the popular ones so we didn't fight over them. We had so many Barbies. If we went to the movie theater, the Barbies went to the movies. If we went on vacation, Barbies went to the airport. Like everything we did, the Barbies did. But one thing that I remember more than anything about those Barbies is there were hundreds of Barbies, but there were only a few Kens. And the Barbies that had a Ken were special. And the Kens that had a Barbie were special. So Ronaldo, you are her Ken. Candace, she, Candace is your Barbie. So you are special. I know you were like, where's the story going? <laughs> but you are that special one. And for some reason, I mean, you managed to make it through all of her tests. I can't even imagine how many tests she probably put you through. I'm sure there were. But you managed to pass them all with flying colors. And she managed to pass yours as well. So to that, I would like to say, we didn't have any brothers growing up, but to our brother, welcome to the family. We, we really mean that about, we're, we're so happy to have you in the family. And the moment Camille and I realized that was when we flew out to San Francisco to wedding dress shop. We landed at noon and Camille and I said, when's lunch? And Candace said, we have a dinner reservation at 8.30. 8.30 p.m., that is eight and a half hours later, Candace. But Reynaldo came into the living room and he was like, when's lunch, you guys? And Camille and I were like, this is the one. This is the one right here. But seriously, brother, seriously, brother, welcome to the family. We are glad to have you in the family, and we look forward to making many beautiful memories together. Thank you. All right, guys, I just want to say thank you for everybody getting here safe and, and that we are blessing this lovely couple. Um, I want to say thank you to the parents for um, guiding these two wonderful people to a wonderful marriage and uh, a bright future. And then, of course, I'll keep this brief. <laughs> um, pretty much from the time I met Ronaldo, um, we went to high school together uh, at a private school. He's all about one thing. And anybody that knows Ray, you know this for, for, for a thing, is, is that he's all about excellence. So when it comes to dance routines, or frat events, or um, even making a CD, <laughs> he's all about meticulous detail. And that shows me that he's all about perfection and trying to perfecting his craft and bringing out the best in himself. But one thing, I'm really going off the dome right now, I'm not even going to read this anymore. One thing that I really appreciate is seeing his growth as a person when he started trying to be a better person within himself. Um, when he started to analyze a lot of the things that he needed to improve on for himself, I, I saw that he had a closer connection to God. And once he got that connection to God, God blessed him timely with an amazing woman, which is Candace. Candace. <laughs> Candace, honestly, has made Ray become a whole different person that I think he doesn't even realize how quickly he's evolved. Um, not just as a person um, that's trying to perfect himself, but I think she made him realize that perfection only comes through God. And once you start to acknowledge that the Lord actually de decides what's perfection, then that actually makes everything else go into autopilot. So with Candace, 
that's his perfection. Because she completes him and she brings out the best in him. And she continues to, without effort, make him go to places mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically that he's never been to before in regards to improving himself. So I know that Candace is not only perfect for him, but that she was God sent for him. So for Candace, I've met her only twice in person, but I could tell you that she's a godly person without even asking her about any of her faith. That more alone tells me that this will be stronger than ever as a union. And the one thing I can say is that as Ray evolves as, as um, the man that will not only help his future, whether it's children or others like Liam that came up here, but all those that surround him, I think that he'll, he'll have the best come out of him because he understands that God's guiding him in, in bringing out the perfection. So I just ask everybody to raise your glass. Candice, Ronaldo, I love you both. I know that the best is yet to come. And this is only a testament seeing all these people that came here to support you. And even those that, that are not here for whatever reason, that you have blessings coming from all over the world, above and here. So I, I ask that you stay true to God and let your, your marriage evolve with perfection. everyone. So if it's okay with everybody, we're going to direct our comments towards the couple. But we feel y'all over here still. But we're going to direct it this way. Hello. I'm Kristen. This is Trisha. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to read directly from my phone. Otherwise, I'm going to get distracted because it's been a long and emotional day in the best way possible. We're Candace's maids of honor. We've known Candace for a good minute all the way back to Duke University. Go Duke! <laughs> Go Duke! And we are here to share some words of wisdom to both Candace and Ronaldo. Before I start, I have to say that this Maid of Honor journey has been amazing, mostly because Candace and Ronaldo are so easy to support, but also because Trisha is such a great Maid of Honor to be with. I'm about to be emotional. Okay. All right, so we have two letters. We have two letters. Mine is to Candace and Trisha's is to Ronaldo. And we also hand wrote them, but we're gonna give them to them separately. Please note that. Candace, I'm so incredibly happy to stand here and toast you and Ronaldo tonight. This has been such a journey. From San Francisco to New Orleans, back to ATL and then to Philly. You and I have, I'm sorry, have also shared such a journey from Durham to Baltimore and Philly countless times in your car dropping me off somewhere I had no business being. <laughs> That's different. To DC, to Atlanta and so many other cities and phases, I've known you for years and I won't say how many because it doesn't matter. You and I met freshman year at Duke. I'll never forget. I was at the Duke card office with my aunt and you and your mother walked in and my aunt said to me literally, there's a black girl, there's a black girl, go talk to her. <laughs> and I ran over and stalked you and we talked. And you were in a different dorm than me. Duke people will understand this. She was in Wilson, I was in Pegram, but we connected and we've been connected ever since and that was only God, that was only God. You have not been able to get rid of me since. We are journeying on the path to Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated together. Always ready, but it's beyond that. You're like one of my sisters at this point. The stories I could tell, but I won't. Candace, you're one of the most loving and generous people I've ever known. You are a fiercely loyal friend, and I am incredibly proud to stand here as one of your maid of honors. We've supported each other through all types of relationships. I won't go into detail. <laughs> I can say without a doubt that you deserve the world 
and I trust Ray will give it to you. From the first time you told me about Ray, I knew something was different by just how you said his name and by how often I started hearing it all the time. I knew it for sure the first time Ray took the phone from you when we were talking and joined the conversation, and it was like we always knew each other. That was a blessing. You all are married now. You all are each other's forever, and this makes me so happy. A few words of advice, do with it as you may. <laughs> first, keep God first. Second, continue to be each other's safe space. Sorry, I was not in the microphone at all. Y'all hate me, I'm sorry. Third, let him have his oxtails in peace, Candace. Let him have the oxtails <laughs> and eat them however he eats them. Fourth, the juicing is a thing. Just let it be a thing. It's a thing. It's a whole thing. It's okay. Fifth, choose each other daily, even on days when you're on each other's nerves. And lastly, let him be right sometimes. And I promise you I wrote this earlier. Although we know that you're always right. Congratulations, and we love you, but we're not done, because it's a letter for Ronaldo. Thanks for bearing with us, everyone. This is the last right, one, sorry, I I'm promise. <laughs> All right, Ray, you made it, my brother. You made it. You, made it. you and Candace are married. I know she tried to play hard to get at first, but from the beginning, you were persistent and consistent. Two things Candace values. As you know, Candace and I have been friends for over X years. One of the reasons we hit it off in the first place was our sarcasm and bluntness. Some might say we have no filter. It can be a bit much for some people, but not you, Ray. You see what those of us closest to Candace see, that she may be a little prickly on the outside, but on the inside is a heart of gold and a person who is incredibly caring and loving. Ray, your huge heart and playfulness bring out the best in Candace and have allowed her to let her guard down because she knows that you are her safe place. She knows without a doubt that she can count on you and she can trust you with her heart. Ray, as you enter this next chapter of life with Candace, I must remind you, as I told you before, she is yours now. No exchanges, no refunds. So, given you're now in this for life, here are a few words of advice from an expert in the ways of Candace. Number one, don't make her late. Please be ready, on time. Number two, make sure to clean up behind yourself in the kitchen, right away. No dirty dishes overnight. Number three, when booking hotels, locate the nearest Starbucks, which should ideally be within walking distance. And last, if she's frustrated with someone, just agree with her that the other person is wrong and clearly stupid. <laughs> Ray, I have been rooting for you since you started dating Candace. From what she shared about you, I thought you were exactly what she needed. And the first, though I thought it was special, but now I know I'm not, the first, but not the last time you inserted yourself into one of our phone conversations, I was even more sure. As I've spent more time with you, I've come to appreciate just how much you perfectly compliment Candace and balance her out. Thank you for loving and taking care of my friend, my sister. I wish you both a life together that is full of adventure, laughter, joy, and of course, love. I hope you'll both remember to choose each other as your partner each and every day. So if everyone can raise your glass, last toast to the bride and groom.
Big shout to A5A. Yeah, easy, easy, easy. Yeah, we talk about both. Yeah, work. This is tough of territory. It's in our hearts. Yeah, and there's no lie. Yeah, I'll be a bad ass up until the day I die. And when I die, yeah, I'll still be black. Yeah, and six escape. Yeah, I will be black. I'm taking a photo of the facts. Hey, hey, boom, six. No, I put in a two cents. Come to do a million days of rap. You can want any chicks, it's gonna get picked and gonna get thick. I'm on the line and then some of my cats have been gone. That's why you can't just go laughing and then come and tell the way I fall down. I'm doing my thing. I'm talking about a nigga's fault, but I ain't doing a thing. When I'm coming to fall, I'm doing a spring. See, I told y'all I'm doing my thing. Then I'm hitting by the landslide. Yeah, I'm riding. Let's see the way they point at the van. I'm riding now. Look at here, I took it there. I'm looking at this thing loud and clear. Look at this here. Fire. Fire. Then it's a reach for that love with the dog that's on fire That's when you turn it up, you won't burn it up Come and take it with your pride You won't want to come out here when you hear it You got to see it You got to see it You got to see it